What's up everyone? I got a really cool video for you guys today. Kind of another behind the scenes, but more on the production level. I want to give you guys a few tips and tricks that I've learned and I've had some help with in my little journey through producing music. Check it out. Okay, so one of the first tips I guess that I have, this is how I found my style as a producer, but one of the things that I like doing is I like finding uh, different types of sounds and stabs, whether it be like a gunshot or something I found out of a movie um, or whatever it might be. Any sound that I like, I like to use it. So um, this one is really cool. Check this out. <laughs> So this one is actually like a yelling yelp type of screaming with a horn stab and I felt like those were two really good combinations um, just to play back and forth with each other and have like this like banter going on so I thought that was really cool. This next one is actually really cool it's just a few gunshots that I thought added a lot of body to the drop that was coming up. Um, it had a great rise and it had the gunshots and then it had the vocals that were leading up to it. <laughs> So this next tip that I have for you guys is something that I learned um, through someone who's helping me with producing and music production. And that is changing uh, a lot of, not a lot, but a few different settings while you're actually uh, mixing uh, the tracks or the sounds themselves within your uh, DAW. So check this out. Okay, so the next tip that I have, um, something that I've been guided along with, it, which is really cool. If you have a lot of different types of sounds and stabs or maybe loops, and they have this like weird clicking noise either in the beginning or at the end of the loop itself um, or the stem that you might have downloaded, uh, check this out. This one's really cool. So if you are under your DAW, um, you're going to see all these different types of loops. Like right here, I have a festival kick. And what I'm going to do uh, with this festival kick right here is I'm going to change the fade in option. Um, I'm going to bring the fade in to about five. I'm going to have it come out about 10. And what that's going to do is you can see right here, it's almost like a fade in and out. Uh, and that will prevent uh, your sound from having a click at the beginning or at the end. As you can see right here, you can tell that the uh, clip, the little loop that I have with this little kick, um, it has a fade out and a fade in. So that's going to make the kick sound a lot, lot better. So this next tip that I have is for just uh, the volume, the actual EQ of uh, the kick and the snare, whatever you might be doing, this is a really good one. So whenever you guys are working with uh, loops or sounds, you wanna balance that EQ. And I got this tip from the guy that I've been working with with my music production. And this has really helped me out a lot, just with a cleaner, crisper sound that's not so pounding, pumping in your face, that's not hurting your teeth. Uh, it sounds just really good and overall balanced. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna open up your mixer button. And uh, as you can see, I have it highlighted right here. And then your audio region you wanna highlight, okay? So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna highlight the audio region. And you can hear the kick right there. But what you wanna do is you wanna adjust its master gain. So right now I'm at 4.5, negative 4.5. Let's say if I go to 10. It's a lot louder. So you can hear a huge, huge difference. Now, if I go back to the negative 4.5, what I'm trying to do is down here where it's highlighted in orange, you can see it's actually at a negative 6.1, so I'm balancing that. And the ideal number is about negative 6.5 for that really clean, crisp sound that you are looking for that's not going to be hurting your teeth so much. The easiest way to think about all these different tracks and their sounds and how to balance them with your own EQ and look for that 6.5 is when you pull up your mixer and, and you see the volumes, you have green, yellow, and then red. And, and especially if you're DJing too, your DJ controller will have those uh, colors and those indicators as well on the controller itself. But think of these as uh, a stoplight. You have green, which means go, yellow is slow down, and red is don't go there, stop you're going into danger. So when you're mixing your sounds and you're finding that balance, look for that within 
uh, the mixer, okay, and what it's telling you with the different types of colors, whether it be it's green, it's in the perfect level, it's yellow and red. I like to have mine right in between the green and the yellow, maybe slightly pushing the yellow just a little bit, and right there is like the perfect sound for whatever that sound might be, whether it be the kick, the snare, um, a synth, whatever it is, that is like a really good rule of thumb to follow. So lastly, guys, try to balance your sounds, not the overall loudness of your song and how loud it can be, but balance the crispness in the uh, EQ of each track and each loop that you have so you have an overall balanced track and it sounds good when you try to pass it off to have that mastered um, or even remixed as well. So guys, that's just a quick little behind the scenes of me and what I produce and how I produce and just what I've learned in the short amount of time and how to make my sound a lot better. If you guys want to check out that song, it is called Acid. It is now on iTunes, Google Play, Pandora, Spotify, probably your mom's house too. But check it out, hear the full song. That song was probably one of the ones that really launched me into getting into my style. It's very unique. It has its own little twist to it. So um, I would definitely call that a sketchy sound. Thank you guys.